um, six o'clock, close enough anyway. Um, so I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, and are there any adjustments at all to the agenda? I don't have any. Okay. I, I have one. Um, <coughs> it's that uh, Chris um, is not able to be with us this evening. Um, and also our uh, scribe, respect board assistant, Tegan Martell, is also not able to be here. Um, and um, I was going to add uh, the Ainsworth Road as an update, and I assume that's why Mr. McGlynn is here. So we'll probably talk about that in public comment. Um, so is there any public comment at all? OK. So five, I, I'm going to allow five minutes for public comment. I can give you a report on the Daigle property, which I assume is one of the reasons you're here. But I'd like to hear from you first. Um, we have five minutes, Mike. So, is anybody that comes in tonight that's making a speech only has five minutes? Only right? has five minutes. If you are on the agenda, if you want to come and make a speech and you want to have more than five minutes, you need to call and get yourself on the agenda. Okay? Okay, so I would like to be on the agenda for the rest of the year. Is that fair notice? Sure, um, and okay. then when you when you get yourself on the agenda, you have to let us know the reason that you're coming and how many minutes you would like to um, take okay. up of the select board oh, minutes time. Is that my five minutes starting, or is it just one of we, we started, yeah. So, go ahead. I haven't hit start yet, but I will. Okay, the, the question I have is, when how far are you people behind in responding to, uh, like, for instance, VLCT, if they were to send the select board a letter, how long does it take you to respond to it? Uh, usually we, we ask, we make questions of them. They don't really, you really send us anything that we need to respond to. Okay, so if you get a letter from an attorney from one of the townspeople indicating mm -hmm. that he's representing the townspeople, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I can give you copies of the letter. I, I read the letter and we did respond to it by doing something about it. But not to him. Um, not to him. No, I didn't want to. I had, didn't want to waste my time responding to an unsolicited letter from your lawyer. So anything that when somebody hires an attorney, it's a waste of the select board's time to respond to that. It's that not a waste of their time. Um, it's just uh, kind of low on the priority list. My response to that letter was to initiate some action with our own lawyer. And you could have called me up and asked me about it just as easily as sending a lawyer's letter. But we, we had an agreement that any correspondence that I would get a copy of, and I ain't got a copy of anything from mm -hmm. anybody. Mm -hmm. So would, would you like me to tell you what we, the town has done? Do you, want to, uh, do you want to know that now? Or would you like to have a phone conversation tomorrow? No, I, I'd like to know it now. Okay. So once we received that letter, we also received um, calls from a woman named Denise Richardson who lives on that road complaining about the property. So we contacted our town lawyer um, and also contacted the zoning administrator who technically is the person that should be um, reacting to a zoning violation. It's not the select board, it's the zoning administrator. So you're coming before the select board was really not, um, it's not our uh, job, I guess, to deal with a... So anyway, we contacted the zoning administrator and our lawyer together, um, myself, um, Bob, and our town lawyer, Michael Tarrant, worked up a notice of violation to the property owner. And then we sent that notice of violation. You, you, it's public record. You can request a, a copy from Robin if you but like. Don't call me Michael, out. let's not argue this point. Let me explain to you what we've done, okay? Because okay? I'm not going to spend 20 minutes going back and forth with you arguing about this. When you do it here, when you do it court. You can bring us to court as much okay. as you want. Okay. You go ahead and do that. So um, the notice of violation was sent. Um, we sent it certified mail. We sent it public mail. Um, we received no response at all from the property owners, um, no uh, appeal to the Zoning Board of Adjustment, no compliance. They had uh, just about 30 days to comply. That was part of the um, notice of violation. 
Um, then we found out that the uh, post office uh, sent the certified, didn't do the proper steps for the certified mail. So we have resent that to have those proper steps in order. Um, and at this mo moment in time, um, our lawyer is uh, turning over the case, we'll call it, to the Washington County Superior Court. And they, from, because there was, no, there was non-compliance and there was no appeal to the town, um, to the Zoning Board of Adjustment, it, it falls on the laps of the select board, so it's now our responsibility. So we contacted the town lawyer um, and he advised that the next step for the town to take is to pass the case on to the Washington County Superior Court. So that, um, as soon as we get this proof of um, that the certified letter was um, given to the property owner, then we have all of the records from the town that we did due diligence on the notice of violation, and now it, then it'll be in the uh, laps of the Washington County Superior Court. And that's, that's as far um, as we've gone with the zoning ordinance violation. The other thing that I've done as a default health officer is at the advice of uh, Ryan McCall, the A&R um, compliance and enforcement officer, um, is that I have contacted the um, health department. There also the zoning administrator has issues with the fact that there is, um, as far as he knows, there is no water source to that house and there's no septic system. So I contacted the um, health department and let's see here, spoke with, uh, there is a person there that kind of helps out um, the fuddled health officers who really didn't ever want to be a health officer, not mainly me. Um, so, and um, you know, what we were thinking of is that because there's no water, there's no septic, um, that we could um, have an inspection and perhaps condemn the, the building. Um, but I was informed by the person from the health department that that is not a route that the town can take. Um, and the reasons for that is, is that um, that house is not being rented by anyone. It's actually a person's property and they're free to live in that house however they want. If there, you know, with the issue of septic, if there was, um, if we, and, and the town really isn't allowed to even go on the property without their permission. So we could walk on an abutting landowners and if we saw sewage running down the brook, then the health department would step in and there would be a case for condemning the house. But until anything goes beyond the property, is um, there's nothing that the state health department can do about the property. So as far as I'm concerned, we've kind of done our, and then the other thing that happened is that the person from the health department said, well, if there's an issue with the septic system, you should call DEC, which is Ryan McCall. And of course, Ryan McCall suggested that I call the health department. So, you know, there's that kind of loop of passing the buck. Um, so that's, as far as I'm concerned, the town has done everything that it can do legally about that piece of property. Now, and are we addressing section 3.8? Yes. Because that wasn't mentioned, but it is being addressed. Yes. Not the, not the state requirements, but the town's. The town's requirements. We, that's what the notice of violation was about. And I can get a copy of that. You can get a copy. Um, hang on just a second. I think I have one side copy that I don't want to give you. Um, but here's the, here's the final draft right here. You're welcome to have. I have it on my computer. Okay. Um, so it, it addressed just that one, you know, sentence clause in the zoning ordinance about um, more than one uninspected vehicle. So when I go back to my attorney, I should be telling him that you people don't want to respond to him at all. Um, He's welcome to call me up. I don't. I didn't. I don't want to spend the time writing him a letter in response. I've responded to you. You can tell him what I told you. It's on a recording if he wants to watch that. Um, I spend too much time um, oh, doing no, select no, offers. Whether you realize it or not, mm -hmm. we had an agreement that any correspondence I would give a copy of, and you don't recall that at all, either the two of you. 
I remember we were going to give you what we did. Yeah, we should have been doing that. Yeah. Was I told that I would get a copy? We had a conversation on the phone. Well, the problem is generally when I get a response from a letter, my recommendation would be our attorney would respond to his attorney. So. But that hasn't happened. Right. Okay. Understood. Yeah, and that costs the town. You know, we to engage our, the attorney, it costs the town money, and we're trying not to spend any more money than we have to on lawyers over what I consider a totally futile situation. So what we're saying is because these people don't respond, they're being rewarded. And it's not, they're, it's going to Superior it's Court. It's going to Superior Court, and then we'll see what happens with that. That's the next step, according to our lawyer. That's the next legal step. And I, I can stop in the town clerk's office and get a copy of any correspondence that's because it's public record. Is that what you said earlier? Uh, yeah, yep. what the town clerk has, yeah. Okay. So are you saying there are documents out there that the town has? has there, there is an email exchange exchanges that I had with our town lawyer. Um, Which are privileged information until they're in the case. Yeah. yeah I agree with that. Yeah. And that's it. That's the only really public document that's happened so far. So what do I have to do to get copies of this? I mean, I'll come to every meeting if that's what you want me to do to get this, but I would just think it'd be much easier if any correspondence I would get copies of it. Yep, you have a copy now. So, so I, I think, and I apologize for yeah, sending. I, I, I think there was a drop the ball in that, so we should give you copies of what you asked for. We would agree with that, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But at some point, in some some correspondence. Um, not public record? Like well, the stuff between this board and the attorney is not public record. Right, I agree. Anything that. that's like an investigation in progress is not public record. Um, so that, that's, but he has what is officially public record. Unfortunately, he didn't receive it. We'll, moving forward, we'll try to rectify that. Yes, Dan. On the same subject, if you don't mind, has the board voted to take this to court? And is there been any assessment of how much that might cost? Um, according to the lawyer, um, once we pass it on to the Washington Superior Court, the town is free of it, free of, you know, it's up to the Washington Court the Superior Court, Court to, to do the follow-up. It's not that there's going to be some legal battle in court about this. The Washington County Superior Court takes, takes it from here. So they don't, like, take evidence from one side or another? And they will take the, you know, the evidence of the sending of the notice of violation. Um, that's we need that in order to file with the Washington County Superior Court. Um, they, you know, in their actions forward, you know, I have been taking photographs of the property, which they, you know, which our lawyer suggested I do, um, and that might be used. Um, there might be a time where it's the town select board or the zoning administrator goes to a hearing and presents evidence. Um, but I hope to uh, minimally involve the lawyer in any of the proceedings that, that happen. Um, I think the town can do it on their own. Now this refers to one piece of property. Was the we didn't do anything with the Kane property at all. Um, you know, the state has a, a major uh, litigation procedure happening with them right now. Um, it just seemed, again, um, a That's with whom? Litigation with whom? Um, with Marie Caton. Marie Caton? Yes, but that's between Marie Caton and who? That's between Marie Caton and Ryan McCall and the Department of Environmental Con Conservation. So the town's not? The town is not involved in that at all. But you understand there's two different standards. I understand that the state is actually doing something or trying to do something about that, and I didn't really want to waste the town's time or money on that particular property. That's been that way for years, and it hasn't changed much at all, and I don't really see, I, I don't, you know, it just seems like a futile effort to me. And knowing that the state has a litigation process against the Cadence for the very same reasons that we might, um, I don't want to spend the town's money on that on that effort. That that really wouldn't get us anything. But you understand what? Okay, and I understand that it's almost quarter after six, and okay, but you have one you have one more minute, and okay. then we're done. But you understand the fact that because they, you feel it's futile because they continue to reject anything that the town tries to. Impose. And the state, and the state, and the town, and the state, and the town. Yeah. So they're being rewarded by the town just walking away from it saying we aren't doing anything. 
Do you understand how that, that, that's a bad message to send out there? Well, I understand that, and they, they understand that well, too. Um, and they, you know, there have been, the state has issued compliances for that place. It's been uh, judged uh, illegal um, salvage yard, the bur legal burning, illegal waste. You know, that, that determination was from three or four years ago. And have you seen much change there at all? I haven't. So what's the town going to do about it if the state isn't really able to do much about it? That's my argument. And you know, there are many other places in town. You can go in Hardwick, you can go in other towns. There are similar places. They all seem to exist. Some people live that way. And um, that's just the way it is, as far as I'm concerned. So that that. I do, yeah. I don't, I don't like it, but that's their, that's their right as a property owner, so it I seems. So I do something on Ainsworth Road and ignore anything and everything you're sending, you aren't gonna bother me either, is that correct? I will do the same thing that I did with uh, Tanya Daigle. Um, and you know, some people comply, some people don't. So that would be your choice, I guess. I mean, you're sort of at the mercy of the court at this point with the, the Daigle property, correct? Right. Until the court that's, does something. So I don't know what you want us to do beyond that. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. You could right. answer that one question. What do you want us to do beyond what, issuing it to the court? You're asking me? Yeah. I, I think that when, you, when the town passes ordinances, they shouldn't be passing them unless they intend to enforce it. Okay. And there's no enforcement here. So there's no team. Well, that's not true. Because in property, we're doing something. It's you gone. But it's, it's gone to the court. So what more can we do? No, there, I'm okay with that. Nothing. So, I'm just trying to understand. So your objection is that that hasn't happened with the Caton property? I, that piece of property has more vehicles on it than the other one. Right. right, but your objection is it hasn't happened with the Caton property. Right. Okay. But right. isn't it correct that the state police told us not to go onto the property? Because they did. It's they a did. danger. Both, both properties. So, yeah. and technically, not much we can do putting harms in any town to go away with this. Yeah. Okay, I understand. Thank you. So, and you know, according to our zoning ordinance, there are many other properties in town that are out of compliance. So um, it would be a lot of work to go after everybody. Um, so. Okay, I'd like to move on. Um, so next thing um, is to approve the bills to the town. I hear a motion. I'll make a motion. And I'll second. Um, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. And then I um, would like to hear a motion to approve the minutes for the June 14th, 2021 Select Board meeting. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we are ready for the town clerk's report. Okay. I got an email from the Governor's Thoughts office informing us that we cannot charge late fees on the adult licenses until after September 13th. And we have received one application for the road crew hire, and one person has requested an application. Mm -hmm. I have also received and forwarded to Michael about reminding us of the July 15th deadline for the ARPA. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's on our agenda. We'll discuss yeah, that. Just get a file notice. Yeah. And the ad for the road crew went into the Times Artist, the World, News and Citizens, and Gazette. But I haven't been able to find a copy of the News and Citizens. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, is there any way we can get the other railing put up on the steps out front? You still have that, right? I do out here. Oh, we have it out back. No, I look for it, but I... It's in the back. Oh, it's behind. Okay, I thought you had so. Okay. I won the bottom of it, but I got the thing out. Your sister's gonna get after you. <laughs> it's nothing, no. <laughs> I wouldn't yeah, I'll be on the I'll other end of that. that. Okay. That's it. That's it? Okay. Any questions at all for no, we're done, uh, Robin? You. All right. <clears throat> um, town Treasurer's report. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. And it seems that the select board meeting is going to be in the town hall for the unforeseeable future. Mm -hmm. We're changing our Monday night hours to Tuesday nights. Okay. So the town office will not be open Monday nights. Very good. 
Mm -hmm. Be open Tuesday, same time yes, frame, six to eight. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Well, thank you for doing that. It's nice to have you guys here yes. for this meeting too. So. So I guess we're ready for the town treasurer. Yeah. Busy, busy with the fiscal year ending on Wednesday. Um, there will be another payroll run, and there will be another AP run. Um, I have a stack of statements, but not invoices. So in the next two days, collecting mail, whatever comes in for invoices, um, whatever's still left, I'll be doing journal entries for accounts <coughs> payable for it. I transfer for that will be through through Wednesday, right? We close out everything by Wednesday. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and since raises go in effect on Thursday, that's why I'll be doing finishing out um, the four days Sunday through Wednesday for the payroll run. Um, transfer uh, twenty five thousand over into the checking and cover bills. Talk about the federal grant, and we're going to bring up. Is that? Do you mean the American Rescue Plan? I, yeah, yeah, that's on the agenda. Yeah. And then we're discussing during the highway. Yep, the Swenson Quarry. So yeah. And um, I put. Next to the town treasury report, the town fuel contract. Um, did you want us to, can you explain to everyone the, the situation? At, at the last meeting, we really didn't get any bidders. Um, we had one statement from one of the fuel companies that they really couldn't submit a bid because the market is so they unstable. Have yeah. For 30 days. Yeah. So I contacted, we still haven't received any bids. Mm -hmm. Her supplier is willing to lock in that 30 day price mm -hmm. um, for one year. My fee, well, no, 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 just the 30 days. Oh, Here's the actual and for me to kind of check for the pre buy, what we usually, what the select board agrees upon. Mm -hmm. um, I'm expecting, since our, our post office has been open a lot, I'm mm -hmm. expecting them to come in either tomorrow or Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Through the mail, um, Gillespie's was very saying that I was going to have it in hand for tonight. Mm -hmm. um, so I did not check back in for today. So it seems like, you know, even, you know, the thinking was to just stay with um, the present fuel mm -hmm. contract, contractor, um, supplier um, for the fiscal year coming up mm -hmm. and that we probably won't get a bid for the whole year um, just because of the very unstable price. So probably just be going month to month and um, just trust that Gillespie's will um, give us the best deal that they can, which um, is the only yeah. option. Yeah, it's the only option. And they, you know, they have been, I, I would say, pretty trustworthy. We've had a contract with them for three or four years now, or maybe even more, I'm not sure. But, so I think we can trust that that um, they'll give us the best deal that, that they can. Yeah, so yeah. I get an EBR, see something else mm -hmm. yeah. So do you want the select board to kind of approve that we can, that not we, yet. not yet, you want to wait. Okay, all right, so we'll save that maybe, maybe for the, the next, next meeting. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Make a note of that. So that would be in July sometime along. 13th, mm -hmm. I think. Or, um, Leaf, I just want to check in with you. How is the sound and the light? Should we turn the lights on? It's okay at the moment. Okay. All right. So the next meeting is the 12th. The 12th, okay. Uh, anything else, Brandy, at all? <clears throat> For the moment? I have my file numbers of any of the school year and getting everything, all the raises that have turned into mm -hmm. this school year. Once this week's over, then I can provide more. Okay. Can I sneak something in the numbers since I didn't get mm -hmm. public comment? 
I just wanted to report that we have a few hundred dollars left to spend on our uh, Blueberry Fund grant for the FEMA property across the street. Okay. And um, I've been waiting and waiting for a load of dirt and a load of mulch that we had ordered, and I told the contractor you need to have it by the end of the year, fiscal year, the end of the mm -hmm. month. And today some dirt did show up. I don't know if it's from the first person or the second person. It doesn't really matter. If we get extra dirt, we can use it because the grass over there isn't doing very well. Yeah, it hasn't had the best so, of the So, Brandy would love to see this all cleaned up by the end of the fiscal mm -hmm. year, and I'm really fine, but if we have a couple hundred dollars left over for a picnic table or something, hopefully mm -hmm. we'll let that go into the next year. Did, did we have a guarantee with the trees? I know the maple yes. tree over there doesn't look one all that year, healthy. Yeah. One well, year, yeah. I thought the back one wasn't going to make it, but yeah. it seems like it's okay. Okay, all right. But there is a one-year guarantee. Okay. All right. So I have a couple yeah. things that okay. might pop in as far as grants that I want finished up. In the mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I'm aware of one of them. <laughs> so work on tomorrow. Yeah. Anything, any questions for Brandy or? Okay. All right. Um, so um, next thing on the agenda is uh, a report from our um, tree warden, Jim Schweithelm. Um, I don't know if everybody knows Jim, but um, he is our, our new tree warden and um, has a pretty... Should I stand up here? Uh, you could, yeah. Um, Mary, you can have my seat if you I want. Just, uh, <coughs> so people don't have to <laughs> pray in their neck. Why don't uh, we'll go sit in the audience? Take it over. Well, this may be among one of the lesser important items on the agenda tonight, but anyway, I thought I'd bring it to your attention. As the board knows, um, I was appointed as the tree warden in April uh, to take Ron Wells' place, and unbeknownst to me, the state had just passed a new ordinance for tree wardens in uh, November of last year, so a brand new one. So I thought I would just bring those new um, ordinance uh, stipulations to your attention. Not that I think any of them are really going to affect Woodbury that much, but I think you should know about them. And one of the important things that the statute does is it um, establishes an optional tree preservation plan that every town is allowed to do, to make. And it makes sense in a town that would have like a town square or maybe a downtown area with a lot of trees planted, but I'm not sure that in Woodbury it would make a whole lot of sense. Another is establishing a public hearing process for shade tree removals, and we'll get into what a shade tree definition is, but in <coughs> essence it's those trees you were talking about right over there, trees that the town planted, paid to have planted as a shade tree. Um, and another thing is supports proactive management of invasive forest pests, which we'll also talk about. And there were major inconsistencies between the highway law and the tree law previously, and this brings those two things together. So, and it also requires that each town must appoint a tree warden. So we've done that. And getting back to the shade tree definition, so a shade tree is either a tree that the town has planted in a public place, meaning town property, or it is a tree that's designated as a shade tree within a shade tree preservation plan. So that's the only two ways that you have a shade tree. Um, and a public park place can include anything, parks, recreation areas, but excludes the town forest. Uh, the shade tree preservation plan, the state is just now in the process of figuring out what those should look like. And once they do that, which I think will probably take the rest of this year, I can report back and let you know what they look like and if they seem to have 
any relevance to Woodbury. Um, so tree removal, that's kind of, I guess, the big thing in terms of being a tree warden. And there's really not a whole lot of scope for the tree warden to get involved in that. Basically, it's only shade trees that are still healthy that the tree warden gets involved in deciding about whether they should be removed. So a diseased tree would just come down, and a, um, but a healthy tree would require public notification and potentially um, select board meeting to talk about it. And I have a question about that. In the past, um, you know, in the town highway right of way, there may be trees, uh, I think right in South Woodbury, uh, that were definitely dying. Um, and, um, and also on, uh, on Mike McGlynn's property, um, there were trees that were definitely not healthy in the town uh, highway right of way. And we engaged the tree warden to make that determination um, for the town to either face with the property owner about the town uh, removing them at, at their expense. Um, is that something that... Um... Well, according to the new law, um, the highway foreman is empowered okay. to talk directly to the abutting property owner mm -hmm. and make that determination. Okay. And if the property owner does not want to go along with it and the you know highway foreman thinks it really needs to happen, then he can bring it before the select board. But the foreman could also, you know, ask me to come look at the tree. But I would be just giving advice. It wouldn't be, you know, my decision. <clears throat> and then, yeah. On the tree, if they decide to fall the tree, is it up to the town to remove it or if they just drop it wherever it may um, it's really uh, legally in the right of way is, is the property of the landowner, not of the town. So the town, I don't believe, has the responsibility of removing the tree because it actually belongs to the landowner. That's, that was my yes, answer. Right. Yeah. And uh, so an abutting landowner, they can cut trees in the right of way without anybody's approval. And utility companies are basically the same as the road commissioner, that they can cut trees that they see as, you know, interfering with their lines with the approval of the abutting landowner. And probably everybody knows that DT trams can basically take any trees they want in the state road right away. And there is um, a state part of the state uh, forestry apparatus that can potentially provide uh, support to the town. It's the Vermont Urban Community Forestry Program. And the kind of assistance they can provide is one would be with planning for the emerald ash borer um, in terms of doing um, an inventory to see how many ash trees there were in the rights of way, and then trying to figure out a plan for removing them, you know, which could either be done preemptively while they were still alive or waiting until they die. Um, and the second thing is they would help with the shade tree preservation plan should the town decide to go forward with that. And they also provide tree planting grants if there is any other place in town where, you know, trees should be planted. So um, the bottom line is that there's a, probably a fairly limited role for the tree warden in Woodbury, um, according to these new laws. And some things that I probably could do would be to maybe work on an inventory of trees in public places uh, if that was decided was important, or to seek the grants for tree planting or potentially to take the lead on the emerald ash borer response planning um, and also just follow the developments regarding that shade tree uh, preservation planning activity. So uh, that's all I have now, uh, if anybody has any questions.
I just have one comment about the Animal Lab for um, the Conservation Commission. I think this is our fourth year doing it. We have put up um, traps um, yeah. just to kind of monitor whether or not uh, the Emerald Ash Borer is in Woodbury. And so far, um, we have a, a trap in the town forest. Um, Jack Travelstead has one up in West Woodbury. Um, I have one in a nice patch of ash on the backside of uh, Nichols Pond. Um, we've had traps down in in South Woodbury, uh, there isn't one there this year. So far, we haven't found any emerald ash borer. Um, and I did talk with um, Greg Parkers, our road foreman, about the ash trees and you know along the right away of uh, the town highways. And, um, we just figured you know we would treat them as any dead tree when we notice a tree that's dead and it looks like it would be a hazard or needed to come down, and we would put it down. So, and that was, that was a good question that I think I had in grade two or three years ago. Was, well, the state has a map of the outbreaks. It's on the Vermont Invasives page. And there is probably, most people know, a pretty big outbreak in Plainfield. And we're kind of on the periphery of that. So, you know, there will be an ash borer outbreak here yeah. before think, too long. Southeast corner. Of Woodbury is in that circle that they've drawn around the upper end of the field. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. So, next on the agenda um, uh, is um, a discussion with the Harder Police Department. And <coughs> Pull up a chair. Come on up, up front if you'd like. <coughs> Pull up a chair. <laughs> so, front row seat. Uh, we'll put you right on the seat. We don't look that dangerous, right? <laughs> so, um, Paul, actually, Paul has had some discussion with um, the chief and Paul, maybe. Yeah, so uh, uh, we had had a conversation. One of our issues we've been having is we, we contract with Washington County Sheriff for our, our highway patrol, which isn't happening. We're getting frustration from folks when, um, why aren't we patrolling this? Why aren't we patrolling that? Um, and our frustration has been, they're not coming. We've budgeted a certain amount of money and it's not happening. So. Uh, Lieutenant Leo and I, or Detective Leo and I, had a conversation about maybe you guys coming up to do it. Um, and so that's, I guess, what we're looking at today. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the first one should be to myself. Anybody that uh, I think anybody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, Aaron Dawkins, I am the Chief of mm -hmm. Margo, uh, the Chief of Police, and I have been uh, since 2011. I'm in my 19th year long. Uh, <laughs> with me, I have Sergeant Darren Barber. Uh, Darren has been in law enforcement longer than myself. Uh, and so we're kind of two uh, running the operations, if you will, at the uh, Yeah, I talked with Paul uh, the other day, and so certainly what, you know, what I'm looking for is kind of to see you know, what, what you're looking for, mm -hmm. what, what you think is needed. Okay. Um, well, policing has always been an issue in this town, or the lack of it really is, is the main issue. Um, and as Paul mentioned, we have been disappointed with the Washington County Sheriff's Department and the time that they're able to, to spend here. And when we have asked them about that, they've just told us that they're understaffed and, um, and that's the way it is. Um, so this, I th I'm kind of curious and, and uh, grateful for this discussion to explore maybe an alternative. Um, and you know, for me, th uh, thinking there is the speed, um, the speeding issue. Um, there's also a lack of any kind of um, what I consider adequate or timely response for uh, more um, dangerous situations in town um, from the state police. 
Um, and I know Paul has expressed that you, the police, Harvard Police, have been providing some kind of backup when they're in different... Yeah, you've uh, come up with rescue. Where one of the things yeah. that the fire and rescue is running into is uh, overdoses along the highway. Um, very dangerous situation for us. Chances here, he can shake his head yes. Um, we've had a number of incidents in the last 12 yeah. months where we've had... Just some things. Luckily, up. your officers came up because they were following rescue up or we end up with intoxicated individuals or impaired individuals uh, at fire and rescue scenes and we have no, no protection for at least 45 minutes to an hour. So uh, the thought process was the, the few hours a week of just patrol where somebody would come around. Uh, we've got a few uh, hot spots of drug activity, making sure we're driving by those places during that patrol time and the potential of at least coming up uh, when requested for highway incidents like you know, the, the typical someone passed out at the steering wheel type of call mm -hmm. uh, or, or we're having a, a belligerent or intoxicated individual uh, at, a, at an incident. Mm -hmm. So we're not having a lot of coverage, mm -hmm. there's not a whole lot more, but we, we know the sheriff's office right. can do that if they're here. Uh, so we're kind of thinking like, the, the, we're, we're, what we kind of budget was like two to three hours a week now, I think, mm -hmm. we don't get most of. Right, we get maybe four hours a month. Month, and then, yeah. uh, in various locations, yeah. and then um, if if uh, called to these other incidents, or you know, you're following rescue some. So right. sometimes we pay almost as much in mileage to get them here right. as we do for the time they're here. And and I can see this continuing as a discussion. Like for our upcoming fiscal year, and the last couple of fiscal years, we budgeted five thousand dollars a year. Um, and um, you know, I don't know how much coverage that might. You know, we it was 10 at one point. We kept cutting it, right, cutting it, cut cutting it. So, I mean, it's, it's desperately a need in town. We, I mean, I'm in court on an incident right now that we had last year where it came very dangerous to our people. There was yeah. a gun involved and there was very dangerous. And so it's something that's got to be addressed. Yeah. So, I mean, I can, I can somewhat attest to the, to the need. Uh, mm -hmm. I've seen it from the start. So, mm -hmm. I'm born raised in Baldwin. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, just driving here, um, the black marks on the road. The, yeah, there's a lot of that going on. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty obvious. So mm -hmm. the, the need is, is, I would say, more than obvious. Um, yeah, and it has been for a, lo for a long time. I mean, yeah. when I, I first got on the select board, we did a whole kind of, re and I think we had Harvard police come and, and discuss this with us. And they're, it just seemed like, um, you know, we're a little bit too far out on the edge of the state police jurisdiction. And um, at the time, the uh, a contract with the hardware police would have been $190,000. Um, and that was definitely beyond Woodbury's means. Um, but, you know, I can see involvement from the hardware police department maybe uh, coming on in increments, you know, really to, I think, um, to be able to do some speed um, work here in town and to back up our fire and rescue squad, that might be a, a place to start. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe at a town meeting um, coming up, we could discuss um, expanding that contract, you know, and being able to present costs um, that the town would incur in that. Um, I would be hesitant at biting off too much um, beyond what we've budgeted um, for the coming fiscal year. I, I could see maybe spending a little bit more, but... Um, yeah, I mean, we do need to fill that gap. So yeah. I, I'm interested in what you can... My, my, again, I disagree, the two to three hour a week mm -hmm. patrol plus mm -hmm. that. Give mm -hmm. us a price on what that number is and we'll take a look at it. Mm -hmm. I would... Uh, my recommendation would be Mm -hmm. um, that essentially makes it worthwhile for us to come out mm -hmm. as well. Um, mm -hmm. Luckily, we're obviously bordering down, so right. um, there, there's not much of a, of a uh, mileage factor. Right, um, mm -hmm. which is another benefit. Before we know it very. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is fortunate, you know, for both of us. Mm -hmm. We're not spending a lot of time on the road getting to and from. Mm -hmm. We're obviously uh, right next door. Um, we. Patrol, yes. Um, I think that's probably you know, what we would be able to provide at this point in time. Mm -hmm. And you know, maybe some extra sense of response um, to critical incidents such 
it's probably only seven or eight times a year. It's not a lot, but it's mm -hmm. uh, five thousand probably is. It might seem like a lot, but it probably isn't a lot. When you start well, I know it's not a lot. Adding, <laughs> you know, adding four-hour blocks, but uh, but we can, you know, that it was it would be hard to to throw anything out at you without knowing what you were looking for right. first, obviously, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so. So that was a little, a little bit of fact finding for me to, to see, okay. you know, what you're looking for mm -hmm. uh, exactly, and, and uh, what we can do from there. Uh, but yeah, I would, I would recommend what I would do is, is probably um, as I'm running this in my mind and have since, since I talked with Paul a little bit. Um, you know, some of what I would recommend and how I would manage it is to actually bring somebody in for those four hours to dedicate them here. Um, mm -hmm. Those, mm -hmm. those four hours, mm -hmm. um, and that would, so that would make it worthwhile for, for us um, mm -hmm. and that person that I hire um, or, or bring out, and it would make it worthwhile for you to um, a couple hours can go by pretty fast, yes. mm -hmm. and uh, really four hours on a hot Saturday around the lake mm -hmm. or in the village here um, yeah. can, can definitely, uh, um, we would look for input as if, if we you know went this room um, one of the things we do is, is we would look for input from the community mm -hmm. as to where um, they're seeing uh, issues with uh, traffic etc um, <coughs> and um, take input from the officers as well as to what they've seen when they were here okay and, you know to try and pinpoint areas mm -hmm. that would be target areas okay. One of the things that we have done is that we have done um, a fair amount of monitoring of traffic flow on different town roads. Um, our warning signs around Woodbury Lake and here in the village actually record um, each person that passes by, the speed, um, you know. So we have that type of information. Um, and we do occasionally, um, especially in the summertime, get uh, calls from uh, residents. Um, I'm thinking of West Woodbury as one good example of um, illegal like ATV traffic on Class 3 roads um, where there's basically a squad of 30 or 4 ATV years. Um, there's some people there that that don't appreciate that, like that, and, um, and they have given us the times when that usually is happening so that, and what we would do is call Washington County Sheriff's Department and asked for a deputy to, to be there at this time that was yeah. uh, given to us. Um, yeah. And that was, a, that happened, this happened the last couple summers and it was pretty effective. Um, <clears throat> so we do have some sources of information that would be helpful to, to anyone um, doing that kind of traffic control. Uh, as far as the signs go, we utilize the same signs. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and they are pretty helpful as mm -hmm. far as that goes, mm -hmm. um, times, days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, it, helps you, uh, it helps us <clears throat> focus enforcement efforts mm -hmm. uh, to certain times where there may be a higher level of traffic or mm -hmm. a higher level of, um, of speed. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> a lot of traffic doesn't necessarily mean a lot of speed. Sometimes right. a lot of traffic actually slows down. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. It's sort of the commuting time that seems to be the, the yeah. higher speeds yeah. that get recorded. Yeah. Yeah. It was probably higher pre COVID. <laughs> Post COVID, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. I know that a lot. Of, I know a lot of state employees travel through here as well. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. And, yeah, and the hope is kind of the people around it would stop so, some of this activity we're having, which I hear from my house. You hear them sure. screaming their tires, and the water tub's a problem. Yeah. Over by Ainsworth Road, mm -hmm. problem. This would also take in the back dirt roads, not just the pavement roads. Yeah, if there was an issue, you know, with. No, your four hour block. Yeah, we, we, what we have to do is determine where we need to be for each certain, you know, okay. right. you know. Mm -hmm. you know, a four hour block may mean we might do, um, for example, two hours on, you know, Woodbury Lake, mm -hmm. we may do an hour in town, we may have another road, so we can split that up. Okay. We don't need to do four, we, we don't, I don't, we need to do four hours <clears throat> Because sometimes just having someone driving around, I know when after right. the double homicide, the state police were coming in town a lot, and the problems just mm -hmm. dropped right off, just having a police officer drive by once yeah. in a while. Yeah, if we did a four-hour walk, we'd be in Woodbury for that, that four hours. Right. If that makes sense. Wherever well, they yeah, were. I just wanted to make sure you were actually going to go out on the dirt road right. and not just stay on the yeah. road. Yeah, we would want it all over, yeah. Brandy? 
So my question for you is, do you have a number that we were to choose to go with Harvick? And the reason I say that is when we get calls, complaints of Nichols or West Woodbury, they're either gone by the time somebody gets up there, and if you're already using your block hypothetically to use um, 14, and then so we have to fall back on Washington County. So let's start back at one. Well, and well it's the state police, so the problem is these would be, these yeah. guys are doing a certain, what we're doing now is Washington County is just doing patrol. Uh, your primary complaint people are still Mont State police, yeah. and, and Washington right. County Sheriff's Department would not respond to complaints. Right. That's that's not right. in the, the only time they have is when they were here in town already, and VSP puts out a you know whatever's going on, they would come because they're already here. But and, and so those are two different things. Yeah. So when you're mm -hmm. so when you're looking for patrol, you can do patrol by the hour, and, and you can fill it out by the hour, but it's going to be patrol, uh, not responding to complaints. When you have when you respond to complaints, that's going to be more of a general contract. Uh, we are twenty four seven uh, type of uh, contract. Complaints you can use up that five thousand. Easy, easy right? So like my thought process is kind of like what Mike said is to, to kind of bite off the piece we already kind of pay for. All we might pay a little more. I understand. And if people like what's going on, we might look at adding some services. You know, and, we'll and just to hang on there, just, like, and to, just one other comment, Brandy. Um, so if we engage the Harvard Police Department, we would be dropping our, we, we wouldn't sign the, the contract. contract. It would be either or. That's, right, that's, that's yeah. what I'm getting at. So yeah. There is an emergency. There's emergencies. Emergencies. Instead of two or. Right. No, we'd still need Vermont State Police for emergencies. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if yeah. I need them in a fire incident, I'm going to have to call the oil share or. Sheriff's office and get them to come. You know, that's the way that deal would have to work. Go ahead, Diana. So I'm glad to know that you haven't signed with the Washington County Sheriff's no. Department yet, so that's good. Um, for Chief, uh, we now get a portion of the fines that are levied on traffic from Washington County. Um, last year was like 800 or something dollars. Do you do that too when you share other towns? Yeah, that's all. I'm coding with a ticket. So that is a ticket. So just comes through the state. State Police, it's not Montpelier PD, I don't Barry believe. City. They use Barry City, okay. So one of the, uh, I, I do know, we, we looked at different dispatching options, um, and uh, we actually looked at State Police and what it would cost to go back to uh, State Police for dispatching, um, and it's very expensive. Yeah, they're wanting to get out of that business. Per call, regardless of what the call is, it's just a simple complaint, and they answer the phone, and that's what mm -hmm. So, um, <coughs> so that, you know, yeah, so you can not an option for dispatching. Um, but yeah, so I would, you know, you can, uh, you know, get back to me. You can work all this out. Another suggestion I might make is um, to have a point person, um, or point people, or however you want, mm -hmm. um, that, you know, we can, once we get this all figured out, we can sit down and talk and then you can bring it to me. 
mm -hmm. and go from there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Is. Our, our next meeting, we don't have a meeting on the board until the 15th of July. Um, so I would take this to the board on the 15th. Okay. Um, that there is interest. Mm -hmm. and in the meantime, not to put the holiday in there, there's probably going to be a lot of time to work on it, but we can look at um, costs right. and, and so on and, and send that. You can work with your team or a person or whatever they want. Okay. Yes, I mean, if we gave him the marching order of that four hours a week thing, right. just to give us a price on what that yeah, looks would like. Would you be able to give us a, like a, a initial proposal that we could discuss at our July 12th uh, select board meeting and then... Well, you can't meet with the board before then, right? Okay, so yeah, you... Okay, yeah, we wouldn't need to. All right, so... So that would be the last one, so we couldn't really deal with it till... Okay, all right, so we'll just... July, July 26th yep. would be our meeting after that. Michael, do you have a question? The only thing I would point out is that when you sit down and do your budgets for law enforcement, that now that they're doing a lot of it through the you know internet or online, but mm -hmm. when it comes to time you're giving up one thing to get another, you're going to get better response time on this, mm -hmm. but you're going to have higher court costs associated with officers having to go to bear to go to court. Right. So that's something you need to keep in mind as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or so I guess the, the way we'll proceed is that you'll meet with your board um, put, putting together a proposal um, and then um, perhaps meet with us on July 26th at our next select board meeting. Um, and if there is a, you know, if they do approve a proposal um, from the Harbor Police Department, um, you know, if you could send that to the select board so that we could review it prior, yeah, prior to the meeting, to the just, just have a little bit of time to think about it. Um, we wouldn't discuss it, but we could individually think about it. Um, and if I could get your, your cell number too, then I could call you about this MPD question. What's the best email for you? What's your best email? sheriff's office and then they just bill us when they go right we're just looking to do better than that because again we the two years i've been on the board we've been cutting that budget so we're not spending the money and we keep getting pressure back from the communities why aren't we getting more patrols right. so they, in my opinion i'd rather if it needs to go up a little bit so we can get the patrols that we need that, that's what we gotta do right. it, i mean they bill us per hour and they bill us for mileage um, you know so if it happened that basically. you're using up the faster than we run out of money we run out of money you, know, you stop when the money runs out but hopefully we could schedule us all those blocks and it's working out, you know. I would assume probably the majority of the few that you would want in the summertime, probably a little less in the winter maybe. That um, might be fair. Again, yeah, it's a new yeah. new ground to me. Yeah. Yeah. Weekends mainly? What, what well, weekends have been under a lot of pressure the last, since COVID, because there's a lot more people around. This summer hasn't been quite as bad. Last summer was, oof. Did the deputy just come whenever they felt like it? Yeah, that's how we get it. So unless, we, unless we made a request. Yeah, they hardly ever show. Specific time and place. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which was the case in West Woodbury. Right. Yeah. And, that, and that's just been our problem. Is like We would really like this. There's going to be a certain amount of patrol during the week that happens. Right. Because, I mean, it's best to, to split it up. Like, if they always came, like... Monday and Friday. Right, you don't want to be pretty correct. So, yeah. And, 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 and we kind of leave that up to you. Next time. In my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're good with all that. We can yeah. at night. Yeah, because I'm not the police expert. Yeah, so, Washington County hardly ever came at nighttime. No. Patrol. It was during the day. I know it's. At 2 o'clock or a Tuesday at 7 30 when they knew all the same places were going to go in. Right, we don't want to just target, target a certain group. I mean, the, the, the really bad issues that are going is the 
the road in incidents with the stuff you're seeing on the highway, that type of stuff is happening evenings and weekend days. And I have a question for Paul. When you have a bad accident now and you need police help, yep. you have to wait for the state police or do these guys up to that? Well, sometimes up. these guys will come if they're available to back up rescue because rescue is part of their covered but doesn't always happen so, no. so much of the time part of your regular budget from the well in time we've been sometimes they do it you know so or as, as a little you know it's not an, an official deal <laughs> so that's about much of the time we're waiting 45 minutes to an hour so i mean the incident that i'm dealing with still is that the, there was a gun involved and we had to hold back our people. Luckily, there was a border patrol agent that was able to come clear. You guys did end up coming to that one when you heard there was a gun involved. Um, it's the other problem is our radio, we have no radio coverage down here for our dispatch. So if we have two guys on and one guy comes down here, as a supervisor, I can't reach my guy. Where is that? So if something <clears throat> terrible happens in Hardwick and I need him, we're, we're, we're left behind drug, I just kind of hard to left behind drug. Yeah. They pay quite a bit of money for 24 hour coverage. So yeah. that, that's the problem with sometimes we don't want to come help out the Woodbury Fire Department because they're good, they're good guys, but they got a whole. So they also have cell phones, right? And all that old fashioned stuff? Yeah, we don't have any of that here. We have <laughs> cell phones <laughs> quite a bit. And there's none down here, right? Yeah. I know well, there's well, yeah, it's great, yeah, great coverage. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, we had that issue with communicating. You know, when we again doing this policing thing, you know, with the, um, with a town constable, you know, if they or were somewhere on a back road somewhere and they got into a situation where they needed backup, there was no way safety that they could the um, too. could get a hold of somebody. Um, so we didn't want to definitely didn't want to put somebody in that type of position and. <laughs> And, and I know the fire department probably deals with that in different quite frequently. Quite frequently, there's just a lot of areas where you. But it is terrain. Yeah, it's the terrain. Yeah. Yeah. Towers that we would need to be able to overcome that terrain issues. Mm-hmm. Yeah. State police obviously have towers set up and they have the system. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. And as Paul mentioned, we find that um, you know, if the state police are called and it is an emergency situation, unless they're really close by, you know, you're waiting 45 minutes to an hour or more for them to actually get here, um, which is. Um, and not guns really, involved. You have to wait yeah. for the second person to get here, and it's in time. Right. So. Okay, Paul. We're still interested, I yes, think. Yes, we're still so interested. We kind of got the discussion. Kind of like we laid the groundwork. <laughs> yeah. Did so. you got any more questions? No. Mm-hmm. Okay. Great. Mm-hmm. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Great. You got my number. Sure. Yeah. yeah so Paul will be our town contact. Person. Happy. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, next on the agenda is the town highway report. Um, well, we finished up the grand over here on the Valley Lake Road. Uh, set up on in. Works very well. Last Monday night. Just fed in the way it's supposed to. Started more roadside to the new more machine. Um, then we got held up with everybody needing communication again, but neither here nor there. Mm-hmm. So in the meantime, we've done some work down on East Hill. Made it so that we've got to go further towards South Woodbury before we can make that corner. Get straight on it before the statue of Hill. Mm-hmm. Seems to be working. Yeah. And we.
Can you work on the parking lot for the oh, wow. forest? Okay. No. Last Wednesday I sent uh, Peter and Tim up. Mm -hmm. They cut all the trees, stumped it, uh, chipped the brush, took the wood to the town garage, and I see most of that's gone now. Mm -hmm. And stacked logs up. And today Greg and Tim went back, got it all dead, it's pretty well shaped up. Uh, mm -hmm. In hopes that I can talk to put columns in tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'll go to John's uh -huh. yeah. And another day or so, should pretty well finish it up. Mm -hmm. um, as of July 1st, we can stand on the camera road on that grant. Yep. Yep. And did you have any luck about the water resources? Um, as far as this and Hill on Valley Lake Road, you talked uh -huh. about. I talked, well, um, yes, um, uh, I did talk to Shauna Clifford and she and a, a civil engineer from VTrans can come, you know, to talk about the bypass for that corner. Um, and then as far as Valley Lake Road, I don't know if we, I don't think we really have to check in with a um, stream person, um, especially if we're going to be focused on the ditch on the, the bank side of the road. Um, but I can yeah, you're you. talking about grant money though, to be able to do something like that. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, we could get, um, that is a hydro, hydro, draw, um, hydraulically, I don't, yes, <laughs> hydraulically connected segments of roads. So yes, we could do a, a municipal general roads permit, grants and aid, um, grant for that. We could submit <laughs> that. And, um, well, we probably should talk to Shauna and, and the state okay. engineer about the mud facts before we okay. go ahead and try to get money to put into that corner for a little bit away with it. Okay, think. right. Yeah, I mean, you had mentioned the ditch on the bank side, um, which is pretty well filled in with uh, gravel from the road. Um, it's totally filled in and yeah. it's so steep that there's no way without cutting that back, probably 12, 15 feet on top and putting and putting a Great on that, that you're able to hold that and do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so what Shauna needed was a date from us um, when, when we could meet with her um, and this uh, civil engineer. Um, Want to shoot for a second week in July sometime? After the 4th? Yeah, and that's kind of what we had tentatively left yeah, in that ballpark. So, um, I have, let's see, what's happening So that there's week? July. Yeah. Okay. So we talked about the week of the 12th. Yeah. Um, a Tuesday or a Friday would work best for me. Tuesdays are fine. Yep. Um, do you want to try for the 13th of July to see if they can get over here? Um, okay. You can just get her get a time and just email right. us. Yeah. Preferably one end of the other of the day. No, that's that's Sean that's prefers first thing in the morning. Eight o'clock in the morning is good. Okay. Uh, so let's let's I'll give her that time. I know that's been a preference for her in the past too. Yeah. So okay, uh, let me write that down. And we'll get you an iPhone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have to teach me how to use it. That's all right. I'm like I learned how you can. Uh, Good, so I'll, I'll send an email to her. Make sure maybe I'll try to catch her by phone because there's a couple of other things. Um, and I, it's my understanding now that with the municipal general roads permit, with the grants name program that they have, that VTrans has pretty much taken that over from the regional planning commission. So the process in the past was to have a proposed um, segment of roads that you wanted to um, have the under the program and they would come out and look at it with you and suggest what would be done um, and then you pretty much uh, s submit a proposal based on those suggestions and usually it's you know it, it's the submitting of the proposal is kind of a formality it's pretty much always granted um, there's a certain amount of money each year that a town can expend on that program um, 
and then the work gets done and we submit a report similar to what we'll do for Valley Lake Road right. here. So. Well, uh, I still think we we'll probably should meet with the engineer stuff to see how far the advance may be okay. that bypass is going to be before we want to spend yeah. our money. I think um, with the grant, I mean, I don't think that that grant would, would um, get used for the bypass that we're thinking of. We'd probably pay for that, yeah, but we need to get started on the yeah, we need laying to, out we need, process. We need to start the process. We need to... We, what, so if we, we can find a good path through there, we'd start the laying out process right. and get a surveyor going. And, and yeah, they could suggest... This is the path. Yeah, and then we could consult with uh, VTrans about that path that you're <clears> thinking of. They could you know, maybe either validate that or have other suggestions or, or you know, they'll definitely have opinions about that. And that meeting, if we had you there, us there, and that home, the property owner with- Yeah, we have, we have, we have the property owners, that's a big we'll lay that path out. Yeah, so what we would need to do is um, have it surveyed, the town would have to pay for the surveying of that. And then we would have to have uh, some design work done. Um, and uh, and then we could apply for a grant. I'm not quite sure yeah, where to lay it out to remember. Yeah, we, we, have, we have to do the official process. laying out process. I'm not going through that again without doing it the right way. Right, and that would be a, basically a formality because we have a willing no, landowner. Um, it's not like we're acquiring the property. Because right. um, I think it's a good project, and we should just move, yeah. keep moving forward yeah. on it. And, so do I. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All around it. And when we get it all designed, and we'll figure out how we're going to pay for it. Yeah. Whether the town. I mean, you should probably get, the, get an engineer before you do a survey, right? Usually the, the surveying is part of the engineering. Right. Yeah. 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 So that was the, true for the um, the design work that we had done here. Yeah, the they'll design all that and then we can do that. Then we can actually hold our formal laying out hearing with that yeah. information. Yeah. And then with. With stakes driven too, remember, you gotta, you gotta have it all. Yeah. And then with it, with the design, obviously, if there is. A grant program that that would help us pay for that. Um, then having the design work is um, would help in the in the approval of a, any type of grant application. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, yes, Brandon. So last year, um, well, during this fiscal year, we uh, Larry Smith from the LCP came out and did inspections. Mm -hmm. So I'm waiting for him to knock on the door again. Probably yeah, will. I think it's a yearly thing. So, putting more on your plate, just, I, don't, I don't know if going, yeah, the trees behind the town office have to be, they can't, there's to be no trees overhanging. Or office. touching the building. So I don't I, know if it's tree. the trees, okay. no limbs overhanging, and so I don't, yeah, I don't know. Tree warden, but as far <laughs> well, as well, we have a tree warden here. <laughs> well, sometimes we got to cut the lens off and get back know, here. I don't know if using your new equipment is going to lay off the cut. The, the, no, that, the flail chopper would not do okay. that. First, you couldn't get it back in the other one. But we've got a pretty dependable tree gun. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. right. So, do you, so I guess. I call if you want to make it. I'll stop, yeah, I'll give it tomorrow. I'll stop there and look at it. Mm -hmm. My thought is if the road guys can't just trim a couple branches, then we get the tree guy down there. Yeah. And get it. Well, well, I'll look tomorrow. Yeah. I don't have a clue what. Yeah, me either. It doesn't take But if you get to where you don't think it's, it's more than the road crew can handle, then we'll right. hire the tree guy. To do yeah. It. yeah. Right. And. Did VLCT, their issue was not the fact that the trees were there, but that the branches were overhanging. Yeah, so maybe it is just a matter of... I mean, it's not really clear whether the branches touching the, the uh, building were a problem or getting too close, because there is a really big big well out there that would be a shame to have to... Yeah, we're not going to cut trees, we're just going to cut some branches. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the branches might be over the... I think we should get an opinion from our tree warden also. <laughs> Technically, I guess that would be a shade tree. Yeah. You know what I would do is cut the obvious ones. I think you know, you know, 
Yeah. The town that it had planted probably no longer. No, I don't think that's a lot. No. Yeah. <laughs> and you really couldn't classify it as shape tree. You know, they use the shape of the town hall and town front office. We don't either. It's really hot in here. What's that? It's really hot. We don't need air conditioning. Yeah. Well, we don't need air either. <laughs> Better get some. So all they warming and all that. Yeah. I'll, I'll stop there tomorrow and we'll look back. I think it's, it's a matter of cutting some branches. Might be some big branches, but I don't think they're talking about cutting trees down. Because all we had to do back here was cut some branches off. Yeah. Okay. So, anything else from our road commissioner for the highway report before we get on to the slips and quarry gravel? Uh, I didn't hear that last part. Yeah, I just. Maybe try to, if, wondering if there was anything more that you wanted to report or any questions for you before we start a discussion on the Swin Swinson Quarry Gravel. Um, no, I think we're pretty well set. Okay. Any, any questions at all for, for Chuck? Um, any concerns about roads or whatever? I guess, I'm just curious about, there's still a project having to do with the schoolyard and all that. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not finished yet. That's not no, that's that's on the summer agenda too. I think they've been tied up with stuff we had to close out. Well, no, we're waiting for school folks. Right. Oh, yeah. Cutting hard work between the buses and the teachers. And the kids. So that get done yeah. before fall. It would be done before school real. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we kind of got held up on it last fall when school opened, and then. Uh, I was going to have the boys go work on it last week, and then the town got the money for doing this parking lot up here, so I figured I'd spend that money rather than go over the budget. That's where we're at. Thank you. <laughs> you got a new friend. <laughs> but that's, that's why that's happened now. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else for Chuck? Everybody. All right, so um, we have been discussing the, this um, idea of uh, having gravel made um, uh, from granite up at the Swenson Quarry. Um, we got a bid from Jay McDonald for the crushing of the stone. Um, I did some numbers crunching myself. Um, Who wrote this? Did you write this? Or did Chris write this? Uh, I wrote that. Okay. Um, I hadn't really received anything from Chris okay. and, and uh, needed something. So, um, yep, good deal. He's been busy with his research in May, I think, and which he um, apologized for on the phone. But so um, I don't know really where to begin this discussion. You know, I've. I guess I'll just speak personally for myself. You know, I've been, when I first heard about this, it sounded like a great idea. Uh, then I saw the contract from McDonald and uh, kind of freaked out over the total price um, and wasn't really quite sure if this was the right thing to do or um, so, which is why I wanted to crunch some numbers, um, and which I did. And the numbers, you know, it's, it does, there is an argument for it. We definitely, um, from the price um, from McDonald's for the cubic yard, uh, $13.80, it's not a deal in the um, actual price that we would pay for gravel, no matter where we got it. In fact, the price is a little bit more. I noticed on the warrants that um, a cubic yard of three quarter inch stone from um, gravel was uh, $12.85 a yard. Um, so, so we, we really won't be saving any money. That was gravel, gravel too. Right? Okay, I realize there's different different forms of stone. It's probably easier to crush. Um, well, actually, I think it's true. Yeah. I think that's gravel for the price you're quoting. It is gravel. Yeah, it's gravel, yeah. Okay. One inch one is gravel. Okay. So, um, yeah, so the numbers, I mean, I think where we would really save money um, for the town would be in the in the trucking. Um, and I did work out some figures for that too. And, um, you know, kind of basing um, a fiscal year uh, 20, um, I figured that we roughly um, made 2,000. Um, we hauled in uh, 2,500 and 21 uh, cubic yards of gravel. 
uh, which took 180 trips for the truck to different quarries, um, you know, with an hour, it's roughly an hour round trip to the quarry. Um, so, and then using the V-Trans vehicle and equipment usage rates of, at $126 an hour for the um, tandem axle plow trucks. Um, each year, um, you know, we're expending uh, $22,700 uh, per year for the hauling of the, the gravel. Um, and then over the eight years that, um, you know, again, you know, based on that 2,521 cubic yards per year, the 20,000 cubic yards that we would get from the J.A. McDonald contract should last the town eight years, um, as it appears on paper doing, you know, the various um, math formulations. So it sounds, I mean, it, you know, doing the numbers, it does sound like um, the town would uh, save some money. I, I can't guarantee or wouldn't, you know, don't trust that $181,000 figure and that's how much we would save. We might save half of that. Um, yeah, you got to figure in the, the fact too that every time you want to travel, you're going to have to pull the loader. Run the loader up, yeah. yeah. The loader's got to be there. So that's that's the second piece of equipment besides the truck that's that will be involved. Um, so, um, you know, it's hard to say. It's kind of an unknown. Um, it does appear that we would be saving some money over that eight years. Um, but probably not the hundred and eighty-one thousand. Um, what? This is my biggest concern out of the money. Yep. Is that we borrow the money and pay that off for five years, and that pile of gravel set up there. We have a bad sprinkler to it, and that gravel is used up five years right. instead of eight years. Then we go to Then we're up the creek without a boat. That's yeah, a, no paddle, no boat. Right. So, so these are, uh, let me, exp I have a series of concerns and I talked to Greg Parkhurst and I, I hope Greg talked with you again this morning, Chuck, yeah. but so there are a lot of unknowns still with this and Chuck just mentioned one. What if we use this up in five years? Um, Without well, somebody really monitoring it, I can't see how it cannot be used up in five years. Right, right. And, you know, other unknowns for me are, um, well, first of all, we're going to throw the highway budget totally out of whack. Uh, we're, you know, we're, we're still going to be needing to buy other types of aggregate gravel for other situations on the roads other than the granite. So, you know, we were saying, well, we can use the $35,000 a year in our uh, proposed budget. Um, but we really can't. But we really can't because we're going to need some of that for, so we aren't going to be able to use all of that 35000 towards this 55000 Two hundred and something dollars that we're going to be committing to a year, um, plus the interest. Um, there's, you know, that's another part of this. Uh, about twelve thousand dollars if we go with that scenario for the total five years. Um, it, so how how you know we're going to have to either really increase the highway budget to do this five years, um, and the other unknown is that we still haven't really seen what this stuff's going to look like once it's crushed. That's right. Um, and um, be a lot of that stuff. yeah yeah because yeah, i didn't envision this replacing gravel it was going to replace stone right all right but we were talking about the area yeah everything okay so um sorry Diana. go ahead Diana. Diana. i have some more but um go ahead what happened to the a couple of months ago before all this started uh there was a rumor that twins might give us some fresh they're giving, us, they're the giving us the stone. Yeah, the, dome, the stone is worthless. It's grout. Well, I think they were going to crush a certain amount of yards for us as part of what they're already doing. Wasn't there 5,000 yards or something they were going to... Yeah, no, no, I was in Florida. I don't know why. Okay. Yeah, 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 that, yeah, that was a good place for me. <laughs> <laughs> That, yeah, that, that hasn't been part of the discussion that I know, but I, I, I believe there was a certain amount of stone they were going to crush for us I anyway. I, I don't... I never heard that they were going to crush up for us enough. Yeah, I, know. I did hear that they were going to crush it for around ten dollars a year, but mm -hmm. there's a long ways from ten dollars to right now. Thirteen eighty-five. Yeah, thirteen eighty. Thirteen eighty. We're actually. buying we're buying three quarter inch crushed lead that we went through right now for three seventy five. Thirteen seventy. Thirteen seventy five. So we're only be saving on trucking really. So that's what we're. Yeah. But then you got to run over. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It would yeah. be really great if they had 
some up there that you, we could use, you could use on that reconstruction of that road that's being done, basically, to be able to handle all their additional traffic. But well, everybody screwed up on that when they didn't have paper. They did what? When they didn't have paper a few years ago. Oh, well, yeah, that's another thing. Right. <laughs> well, that's true, though. <laughs> that's, so, I, you know, the council kind of left them in the back on that. Well, that was before they had applied to have the new entrance also. Well, the, yeah. uh, but it was in the back there. Mine pay off the paint all the way down the hill. Yeah. Okay. Right, so, to, the, hmm. to, the, to the current road, not all the way to the... Yeah, yeah, well. Yeah. So the, the long and short of it for me is that there are a lot of unknowns and to make a commitment for a loan that would really kind of throw the highway budget totally out of whack and probably, I mean, I do, you know, I guess I'm realizing that I am I'm a fiscal conservative. I really don't want to put the town in kind of a, a risk with these unknowns and also have a commitment of, um, quarter yeah, basically a quarter crazy. million dollars that we would be paying in a loan. <laughs> um, it just doesn't, my gut feeling is that this is not the right thing to do. Um, and I did have a conversation with Chris uh, just before the meeting. He called, um, and I was really glad that he did because I was feeling kind of, you know, he's been kind of behind this, um, and he wouldn't be here to be part of the discussion, and I didn't really feel, and we have to make a decision tonight is my understanding, because um, the, the crusher will be leaving soon. Yeah. Um, um, it's coming in in the next day or two. If we don't sign the contract, it'll be added. Okay. So, um, Chris? It was here, it was coming back. Okay. No, it hasn't been done. It was coming back for Swenson or for? Swenson. Oh, okay, yeah. they wanted their bid there. They wanted $25,000 just to drop. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they wanted some pre pre crushing uh, yeah. expenses paid for. So, um, so I, but I was able to call, or Chris called me, we were able to talk about this. Um, and he, you know, he was again kind of looking at the the just this is a great deal um you know he he did see some of the numbers and and is aware of some of the other imp imp implications that are not right on the surface and he felt if if others felt that this was going to jeopardize the town um be a risk jeopardize the town highway budget or just because he's aware of the unknowns um also that he would not be in favor of doing this either um so, and that's, that's the way, I mean, for me, right at the moment, I feel that we, you know, maybe this would be a good deal, and maybe it would be like a really bad deal. Um, and I don't know the answer to that, and I don't want to make a commitment for this amount of money um, without being damn sure of, that it would be, um, uh, you know, that the town would save money and, and that it would be a benefit. Um, so I don't, I, I feel that we shouldn't, do this. That's uh, when they last February when they started talking about doing it, they were doing it for ten dollars a year. I was on board at the time. Mm -hmm. There's no way you lose mm -hmm. not ten dollars a year. Right. But all of a sudden they decided they get a country twice, and it's instead of them it costing them seven dollars a year, it's fourteen. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't even seem like it's in the realm of things. Town even want to be thinking about. Because mm -hmm. uh, probably you all will get it that I'm pretty dead set this town paying interest for anything. Right. So. And, and I am too. And I am too. I think we all are, basically. So you're kind of a, not thinking it's a great idea. No, I, there's, there's one individual that really thinks it's a great idea, and I'm sure we'll hear from him, but. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. He's going to remain there. Someone that's very loud and obnoxious who about Who came it. up with the 20,000 yards? That's in the contract. It was no, but who gave it to them? They must have had they, that's money. what they proposed to us. Right. That's what they were. So we, we were talking 10 to 15,000 yards. I'm kind of like where Chuck is sitting. When we started having this conversation, it was $10 a yard, and we couldn't lose at that deal, no. even, even, even with paying some interest. The problem I see now is we've raised the price up high enough where there isn't that much cost benefit, and if the slightest little mishap, we're going to lose. That's my issue with it. This is not like there's a huge cost savings over five years. No, I mean, the same 
There would be some savings for traffic. There, there will be some, but you're you're. You put the right chair on the lorry. You're gonna save that too. Just mm -hmm. not just have it taken up there. You, every load you load. That that price that the state gave you for the for our cost mm -hmm. does that include the driver? Yes, yeah, because the driver. You're gonna have to pay that anyway. Yeah, that's right? driver and truck. It's driver fuel, truck, fuel. Truck, fuel. You're gonna pay those drivers forty hours a week anyway. So yeah. They might be doing something more productive, sure. or spending money in some other way. But that shouldn't really be part of the calculation because they're gonna be paying it anyway. Right. You know, I, I, I think there is some cost savings here. I just don't know if it's high enough for the risk. That's that's, that's my, my question mark. That's my question mark. Too. The thing that I, the reason I'm against it as much as I am is because I'm afraid that in five years it'll be used up. And that's a that's realistic. Could be a problem. We're going to be out of gravel and still paying. And all of a sudden you've got your that individual that you're talking about coming up there and saying, hey. Because we're going to be dumb SLBs, like we already hear it if we don't do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the 2,500 yards that I came up with was based on the fiscal year 20 was the year we spent $35,000 plus a little bit on gravel and stone. Um, yeah. Most of it was the three-quarter inch <clears throat> gravel. Um, a very small fraction of it was stone, but... So, you know, and that's the figure we've been kind of banting around, $35,000. Um, so if we use more gravel, obviously it would be more. And, um, and yeah, and that's another point of mine is I've been telling you right from the get-go that we need to spend use more to increase we're not it. spending money enough. And if you got it right there, it'll yeah. be pretty easy to put it on. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I mean, I want the road to be in good shape, but also I don't want to run the camera into debt that they can never get out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Brandy, do you have anything to say on this issue of based on being our town treasurer? You've looked at the finances of it. <laughs> My thing is, is that there's going to be a lot, if, if it is approved, there's going to be a lot of kickback of not a town vote on this. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a huge amount of money. In Right. And again, I think I agree. It'd be more comfortable having the full full value. Yeah. We'll be paying for some of our future. We don't know what, and if they have to keep paying on it, and there's nothing there to pay on, it's right. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I just think it's a, it's a large amount of money to not look for. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of hearing. Uh, uh, similar concerns from. Um, it's a marginal deal at best. Yeah. What do you say, Paul? What do you say? What's that? Well, what do you think? You always said. I, you know, I said, I said, I think it's a marginal deal at best. I, I think there's a potential there for some cost savings, but I'm not sure the cost savings outweighs the risk that you're taking for the, the same points you're making. Because mm -hmm. unless you're going to measure and only take the few two thousand dollar yards out, right. you're going to have to have somebody right there really pay attention. Because you could happen. literally be sitting here and because even this loan schedule is not a five year loan, it's it's redone again. It is a five year. It loan. is a five. Okay. Yeah. I saw one of the balloon payment and then a redo. Yeah, one's a balloon that payment. Was an option. Yeah, yeah. there were two was, options. Um, yeah, it, it, the balloon you'd have to have a town approval. Um, okay, right. Because we can't go past five years. Right. Yeah. But yet, so my opinion is this: is what I wanted to hear from you. Um, I think it's a bad idea. I, I'm not sure there's enough savings there to warrant mm -hmm. the risk. Yeah, I, I, it, it was a different deal at ten dollars a year. Well, I was kind of got a little sticker shock with the number. I went and looked at that, ran that, went, "Ooh, so uh, that's over a quarter million dollars worth of gravel." I actually contract. First time I went home, yeah. and said, "You need five hundred and fell out the jet." Yeah, so I. I because I said we're not paying that for pre yard. Right, yeah. Right I now. mean, inflation, <clears throat> inflation is good. The price is going to grow. There's no question about it. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that it's going to grow fast enough to ever make this a mm -hmm. good deal. I think the only way we would never ever know if this is a good deal is when we get on the other end of it and look yeah. back and say, hey, we made a good choice. <laughs> You'll all be used to it. Well, well this is one of those damn if you do, damn if, damn if you do, because I can, you know, somebody's going to say, oh, you missed a great opportunity, but if we do it and it blows up in your face, then you're an idiot, so I... <laughs> oh, I don't care the same thing. I said, it's a lose-lose situation. Mm -hmm. That's... You know, uh, it was the best idea there ever was. Right. 
we didn't try it. You fall on your face. I think I would have been willing to ten dollars a yard. I would have been willing to take the chance. I would have. Because that's pretty substantial. I'd rather err on the side of caution than the other where, you know, we blew, you know, well, two, three hundred grand. It became, became a, 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 a liability and expense for the town that, that we hadn't anticipated. So uh, we just don't take any action on it. Yeah. So should we vote not to I do that? We those proposals. So we just, I okay. think we just not take any action. All right. So I think we're in agreement that. Um, uh, I do need to get a hold of Chris Davis. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I think we can state um, no. as, a, as a select board that we're in agreement and I'm you know, kind of basing this on my discussion with Chris too. Um, if he was a part of this conversation, I think he would be also uh, you know, agreeing with yeah. that. I wanted to hear what Chris had to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did too. Yeah. Um, and you know, basically, his the main statement that he said to me was that if this, if the town feels <clears throat> that it would be compromising its highway budget or just its uh, liability, financial liability, with this um, proposal, um, or um, it's not a proposal, I guess, but anyway, with this deal or to go ahead with this, that he would be uh, not be in favor of, of going ahead with it. So. I did get that statement from him. Um, he said he's willing to let go of it. Uh, I just tell him I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Okay. So sounds like the select board is in agreement that we would just tell McDonald that we don't want to do this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, one thing you did bring up part of this conversation, needing to probably budget for more gravel coming forward. So we probably need to, when we're doing our budget, mm -hmm. make sure we have that conversation. Yeah. If you think we need to add some gravel budget to, for next year, then we should need to do that because I don't want to keep it's shortening the budget. Right. That's all right. Shoot it over. <laughs> so what I want to say is, is grants offset it, and we know if we're getting that money and we're finishing that grant and it's a write-off, or the, 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 you can still keep getting it. So, so we just need to play and figure out what grants, how right. much that help, the, because those are a write-off. It's a wash. You right. add so that. You still add that. So again, let's have this conversation at budget time. Right. right. So I think what we need to do is Chuck come to us with we need to add this much to the gravel budget and we'll look at how much of that gravel. I think what you're saying is that if we're using a thousand yards on a grant well, project. Camera, 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 camera. So we would yeah. that wouldn't be added into the other gravel. So if you're spending thirty so and with with the grant for the resurfacing of the Cabot Road, that covers the gravel. And going forward with any of the municipal road general permits, they it was in the past that gravel was not covered. But according to Adam May, you know, I asked him about that. Um, now that VTrans is overseeing it, gravel would would be included. So you may want to add a budget category for grant gravel. <laughs> well, think about think about what I'm saying here. So that if if he's going to buy 2,000 yards, say, as our normal year, and we're going to add 1,000 yards for a grant, you'd end up getting 3,000 yards, but we'd still only spend our normal 2,000 budget on it. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we can figure Ellen, that out when we're doing so the project. told me, no, I'm sorry, go ahead. So we're, that figures in, we do itemize for expenses and income for grants. Right. But we do a better back road grant, <clears throat> the materials get taken right out of gravel. Yeah, right. That's what I'm saying. If you so, did the budget category, but when we get reimbursed, that money could go back in. Correct. But he yeah. needs to buy those. So I'm saying, if we budget had a budget category for grant gravel, right. we would keep it right. separate. So Chuck would know he still has thirty grand. We spent thirty right. grand, but that was a, that was a grant. But we've right. still got thirty to spend on other gravel. Alan told me when we were talking about Valley Lake of said to research that if you need three to five inches of gravel on it, he said go ahead and do it. But he says I have a lot of towns that decide they're going to resurface and they want to flow. And you get turned down. No. Yeah, right. So that's just something to keep in mind. You should have that and you can get paid for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I talked mm -hmm. to Sean about reimbursement on So I think that's easily fixed. And if you but know, me too. And we should get reimbursed a little bit more promptly now that VTrans is overseeing it. Um, I hope. But, but yeah, so. 
I mean, we, we'll figure out how to do it, whether it is yeah. grant gravel or whether yeah. we can just... Well, think about that budget goal thing where you could grant just so you can keep right. it separate and know that you can see. We're not, I think what we're doing now is we're eating into your gravel budget and then you're not spending it and we get the money back. Because right. sometimes... We shouldn't be it. doing that. We should be buying all our gravel and then also all the grant gravel. Yeah. Yeah. Something really, I know I'll say it's kind of something really needs to happen so that come the 1st of 15th of May or the 1st of June, Budget well, budget yeah. time happens to be the end of the end of this yeah, calendar year. Yeah, I've got four lines standing around with it. Some stuff right straight out. Yeah, that ain't amount of nothing. Mm -hmm. I think you know part of it is kind of just trying to have your crystal ball and figure out what's going to happen. Okay. You know. Uh, six months from the time you're actually putting the budget together you know lots of times we don't know if we're going to be awarded a grant so to count on that kind of, so it's tough, yeah it's, and it's just a budget it's just a budget not, not that i want it to go right this <laughs> doesn't create a lot of stress so um it's it's all kind of a best it's an educated right. guess right. um you know, so, so I think be ready for our budget time with how much gravel you think needs to go out and then we'll look at what we've been putting on and what the grant is and we'll come up with a right. program so you aren't you'll know where you are. Right. We want yeah. thirty thousand thirty five thousand. Yeah. So we may need to go up. Yeah. You know, we've been here. We'll, we we'll make sure that we have the highway budget discussions before you head to Florida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so anything else? I guess I think that's been think we probably, okay. So let's move on. Um, again, spending some money here, but um, let me find that. So the uh, community library roof. Um, uh, at our last meeting, I think it was at the last meeting, um, we had received a bid from. Um, uh, this fellow, Michael Taylor, um, Total Roofing and Services Incorporated, he gave us a bid for the community library that came out to $34,500, yep. which was way more than we were anticipating. Um, so um, so what, uh, what we had decided that we would do is we would contact some other contractors, roofing contractors, um, which I did. Um, and I also had a discussion with um, Michael Taylor about the uh, estimate, the bid that he proposed to us. Um, so first of all, I, I contract, contacted uh, two roofing contractors, EF Wall and um, Burl Roofing. EF Wall did reply, um, saying that they were pretty much booked for the season. <clears throat> and I think it was really too small of a project for them. I, and Burl uh, Roofing, I did actually get to speak to someone and they were going to talk to the boss and or the owner or whatever and I never heard from anybody about it. Um, so, but I did have a good conversation with um, Michael Taylor. Um, obviously that first bid was sort of the, uh, I call it the Cadillac uh, roofing job. Um, and he did mention to me, you know, the, the metal ice, uh, stuff um, in the valleys and on the on the edge of the building that's kind of that is sort of a Cadillac treatment it pretty much assures that anything um, that might go wrong doesn't um, and he says that you know for 95 percent of the roofs that he does like the community library there that type of ice shielding um, isn't used and it ha happens to be very expensive right now as most, you know, uh, as part of the building material, um, you know, skyrocketing costs. Um, so he said we could eliminate that totally. Um, and he would just do what he usually does with the roof, which is kind of what's there now. Um, we did look at the roof, Paul and I and Sarah Van Hoff from the library trustees. And your idea, Chuck, of buying some stuff to cover a particular spot, it's pretty much almost all of the roof that's in pretty rough shape. The only the only part that isn't yeah, shingles. Is, I mean, it's got places where the soffit's starting to oh, yeah. sag and the yeah. edge is rolling down. It's and the, the, the part north facing part um, towards the school is the one section of roof um, that really is in you know you could get by for another few years without um, worrying about it. Um, so. Um, anyway, um, so by eliminating the metal package, um, and then he, you know, having, um, 
Bethesia, you know, he that he did give us a new quote for that, which was pretty much the same. Um, and then um, he figured from looking at the roof that there were, rather than replacing all the plywood subsurface, which is you know, probably unnecessary, it, which is unnecessary. That's again the Cadillac treatment <clears throat> um, that I'm calling. And he said that from what he saw from looking at the roof, that there probably would be four or five sheets of plywood that would need to be replaced. Um, I would agree with that. Yeah. And, um, you know, he. He hadn't, in the second um, bid that he sent me, he didn't change the $95 per sheet, but he did mention in the conversation that um, at this point in time, plywood was down to $55 a sheet. Bark it. Yeah, so, so I had sent him an email about that and just asked about the price per sheet, and he said that he would use the rate for plywood that um, when he actually works on the project. And, you know, we have until school starts to get it done, and he's aware of that. So if we waited until, like, into August to, for him to do, he figures he can do this in a day with his crew. Um, so if we wait till August, maybe the price of plywood will be even cheaper. Um, so is so, this the whole roof for the library? Yes, the or whole building. Section? The whole, no, the whole <laughs> building. The whole what was the bottom line number? Okay. So the bottom line number, um, you got enough people, they can. Yeah, no, hey, this, he has an 18 man crew, oh, okay. 18 person crew. The swarm. <laughs> all the, all the fascia and soffits would be all pre cut, painted, um, um, and you know, they would have the roof off in a few hours. Yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he figures he can do this pretty much in a day. Um, so we're, let's see, let me find it. I didn't print mine. I thought I printed it, but I, I did, I left it on the printer. So that's the old one. Um, it was like 13 something, right? Yeah. <laughs> I know I have it here. Uh, this is, okay, it's got to be here. <laughs> oh, we're going to get that real quick here. Okay, here we go. So for the, for the replacement of the roof, um, the cost would be thirteen thousand nine hundred dollars. Um, take the and that includes taking the shingles off. Uh, re, um, there would be the plywood, extra plywood cost, depending on how much she has to remove. But um, and doing the drip edge, etc. Um, and also um, dump fees. So it would be labor, materials, and dump fees thirteen thousand nine hundred dollars. That includes the new shingles. Mm -hmm. Yes, that includes the shingles. Um, and then labor materials and dump fees for the perimeter trim would come to um, $5,300. So, um, 18 five. yeah, <coughs> basically 18, yeah, 18 five. Um, and then whatever the plywood cost would be added to that. So it's under $20,000. So I will make a motion. Okay. To spend up to twenty thousand dollars. All right, I'll, I'll second that. We'll do the roof. And is there any further discussion? I was just going to mention. I don't know if you've seen it, but in the library's latest minutes, they said that they have twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. They will move that she list. She did share that with us. Yeah, <clears throat> that was Sarah. She got to be done. done. So. Yeah, right. yeah. They have they have approved um, twenty thousand um, dollars. And one thing that I might add to the. So the motion is if the costs go over that, that the town cover whatever the... I'll add that to my motion. Okay, all right. So I we could use... Below five in the town <laughs> See Brandy for Elva runs. Yeah. So, um, okay. Uh, so the motion, would you want to amend the motion? I, I did already. Oh, you did, okay. You accepted it as the second. And, and so. I second it, all right. So the motion we spend up to 20 and it goes over the town and pay the difference. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so I will contact Michael Taylor and let him know that we, um, that he is being awarded the contract um, to repair the library roof and I'll try to get a date from him and when he might be doing it. Um, and uh, I'll let the library trustees know. Um, yeah, we definitely let that go a couple of years too much. Yeah, yeah. A little too far. Even, even discussing it <clears throat> last fall was sort of too late. But so it's great to know that it's going to get done. Um, There's places the edge flashing has failed, and it's just it's like, I'm surprised right. it's not inside the building yet. I was horrified when I looked at it. Yeah. I thought, like you said, we could goober it up a little bit, and I got looking. I was like, oh boy, it's a, lot, it's it's a lot of goober. Right. <laughs> Yeah, this one, I think some of it you could, there's places no. Well, I'll do something. Yeah, it might be all of it. 
Okay, so next on the agenda um, is the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, so basically, um, tonight the select board needs to um, decide if we want to go forward with the funds that, um, the estimated funds, seems to be an ever-changing number, um, that uh, the town would receive. Um, we have to sign um, a document, um, approve um, uh, the um, Corona local Coronavirus local fiscal recovery funding from the U.S. Treasury. And so there are three things. Bonnie Weiger provided uh, the three bullet points that we basically need to approve. Um, and then we would need to certify that we are requesting this money by July 15th, which is the um, kind of post-decision formality of filling out a form. But not... not identifying a specific product. We don't have to decide. Just saying we're going to be applying. Saying yes, we would like this money. Um, and then we have quite a bit of time to figure out how we want to spend it. There's no, there's no, as far as I know, there's no um, <coughs> uh, deadline for that. So um, basically, Bonnie uh, Weiger from the uh, regional, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission is suggesting the following draft language for motions. Um, and I'm just going to read them. Um, so basically, I move that the town of Woodbury accept its allocation of coronavirus local fiscal recovery funding um, from the U.S. Treasury, along with the award terms and conditions and assurances of compliance with the civil rights requirements that are requirements of accepting these funds. And those requirements are basically boilerplate requirements that any federal contract um, would, would um, you'd have to agree to those. The second bullet is that... So let's um, do the first one. I'll second okay. that. All right. Um, all those in favor? Say aye. 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 Okay. All right. So that second... we don't get confused. <laughs> right. <laughs> I get confused easy. Right. Second bullet is um, I move that we appoint X someone, XXXX, to serve as the town authorized representative as required by the coronavirus uh, local fiscal recovery funding. Um, CLFRF for short, from the U.S. Treasury to sign the award terms and conditions and assurances of compliance with the civil rights requirements by such and such a date. So we don't, we don't have to do it tonight then? We should do it tonight because July 15th is not that far away. We would, our next meeting would be July 12th. So if we could do that tonight, I would suggest, um, and I think um, Brandy would be willing to be the designated authorized representative for this. Is, is that true? No. Yeah, when the audit comes in 2026, right. <laughs> so we'll be looking for the town And this will be a federal, <laughs> there will be a federal audit, so. Very nervous. Which is. So that's mostly our fiduciary person. Per yes. Yeah. yeah. So basically, yeah. Person. person. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. So the motion is just to be clear. Um, I'll get it out. Is that we that the town of Woodbury um, Select Board moves that we appoint Brandy Smith to serve as the town authorized representative um, and to um, sign the terms, award terms, and conditions and assurances of compliance by July fifteenth. Second. Okay. Any further discussion on that? We'll come visit you in jail. <laughs> <laughs> all those just in kidding. favor, say aye. 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 Okay. So all the transactions as of now, I just put it over right over the computer. Yeah. Put it in that we accept it. Um, and of course, as soon as the minutes come out, I will keep that with the backup because they will come through an Okay, so the third bullet um, that Bonnie is suggesting is that um, Town Woodbury move that we name so and so, such and such, to be the contact person for the Town Village Cities CLRFR award from the U.S. Treasury. Um, and I would suggest um, that Brandy Smith also be the person, um, the contact person for the town, if she is willing. Okay. I'll second that then. All right. So the motion would be that um, the Woodbury Select Board will um, move that um, Brandy Smith be the contact person for the town for the town for the town of Woodbury. 
Any further discussion about that? Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I'm still used to the Zoom eye here. I don't know. raise your phone. <laughs> um, By the way, I'm really happy to not be in a Zoom meeting. Yeah, me too. Yeah. We could have so all. My, my house has heat pumps. Cool air conditioning. It's only 70 uh, degrees in my house. Yeah. <laughs> Although I have to admit, it's not horrible in here. Yeah. Been worse. Yeah. So my house is a lot nicer. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Here's my mind. Yeah. So then, yeah. I'll have a little light. Yeah. So that's <laughs> basically <laughs> what. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So um, basically, we've done what Bonnie suggested we do. So we'll um, sign it and get it to her, so we're in compliance. Yeah. Okay. So the minute you know, the minutes will sh show that that we that we approve these. So. Um, a new plan will be created and will be tracked very closely. We have a lot of work to yeah. do. And we don't need to assure <laughs> Bonnie that she was just kind of yep. being an advisor. We just yep. suggested. <laughs> <laughs> these. That's it. I don't think that we need to do that yet. We don't have to do that until we get the money, oh. um, or, we or when we anticipate the money. We will be. Yeah. It would be like setting, yeah, setting up a fund for the the We don't want to mingle it with our. No. Okay. Um, anything else about the American Rescue Plan? Act? There is a VLCT. Um, I hopefully this week we'll get to look at what they're. But they have to say about this whole thing. Um, Randy and Robin, did you attend that webinar? We did. Did you find it helpful? It, it um, made me very nervous. Yes. Because they can give you recommendations, but when it comes down to the audit, if, if the federal says, well, no, that doesn't cost you money, the town has to pay it back. You're right. Yes, and, and Bonnie, that makes me very nervous. Yeah, Bonnie made that point at our last meeting, which also makes me very nervous. It, you know, it seems like we could propose things that we want um, and, and, you know, give our argument and have it approved so that we know, I mean, spending the money on things that we have no idea if it's going to be approved yeah, after the fact way. is totally, well. I so I think the easy it. answer, you know, we're going to have a process to go through. The easy answer is be very, go with what's very clear in the yes. language, the stuff yeah. that's, that's eligible, don't, no shady areas, no edge areas. It's, if it's a, if it's yeah. clearly covered, that's what we go for. Yeah. Then it's right in the language, pretty well guaranteed. And the you know the internet, high speed broadband internet connection, that is definitely that's a stated criteria, and that is one that. Well, the dangerous ground on that though is how much value it's actually going to bring to our community. So yeah. that was a lot of discussion that's that, that has to happen yeah. around. They're going to be receiving their own federal money. Yeah. So maybe to step back and maybe see what they're going to offer. Yeah, like, so there's a lot of what ifs. Yeah, because there's a lot that's tempting, low fruit. But the problem I have with it is I want to see this money do the most that it can for yes. Woodbury. I don't want to give it to CD Fiber, which is an easy answer, but there is anyone and then have them spend it in that right? I just right. that that's really stupid for us. I think we need yeah. to. We it doesn't come with a book of magic, does it? No, <laughs> no, no yeah. there, we have all sorts of time and what we're we got time. So yeah. this is it. if we, if we stay on solid ground and look at what's the most solid ground that the, the benefits Woodbury the most, I think that's what we need. To and do. we'll have the LCT and the regional planning commission as advisors on whatever we come up with it. And, you know, Bonnie at our last meeting advised that we actually have town, you know, take the time and get town input. So we'll probably have a public meeting. We'll, we'll well, I'm even having a thought of what if we have a committee formed. We could do that too. Designed, instead of us being the, we're the ones to make the decision, but what if we form a committee that collects all the ideas and brings that stuff to us? Because again, we're busy enough. I think this mm -hmm. is a, area that's ripe for some town input to say we're going to put a, right. someone in charge they're going to do the solicitation they're going to bring the input and they're going to bring it to the board that's kind of my thought so that you and i and I, I'm agree, are doing I'm it agree with that. <laughs> whatever that looks like yeah. so what i'm saying that is that gives us well some time to figure that out because mm -hmm. i think in the next month or so we should get that committee going yeah i agree yeah no, i think that's a great again, you and i and chris are very busy people and, and we have to make the final decision and I think there's too much danger of us appearing, right. not reaching out enough, but if it comes from the outside and then we're going to have the final say, 
but it's that, you know, the perception is the public outside did it. Right. And we could make that final decision, not just the three of us, but we could have this committee involved. Yeah. However, kind we, of come to some kind, to of kind of see the idea consensus. And then we are the ones that, you know, uh, do the official approval or whatever. Because I just didn't want to feel like, well, the board, they reach because what happens, we send stuff out. Nobody responds. Then we have to make a decision. Someone's mad about it. Well, so we're not going to make any decisions public. Right. You make right. some public that's going to figure this out and bring it right. to us. Yeah. And we have some ideas already. So what we need to do is kind of brainstorm. Well, who would be someone that might be interested in overseeing? Yeah, we have to figure out that. We just just yeah. think about it. That's yeah. why I raised the idea. Think about who might be some good people to do that. How much money are you thinking about? Right it's now, like the 90, amount is ninety-eight thousand. Yeah, ninety-eight thousand dollars. Originally, it was two hundred and fifty-eight thousand right. dollars. But now, anytime money has to pass through another gate, it gets sucked up. So the county's going to definitely suck it up. Yeah. The chance of having a dollar come out of there. <laughs> and the, the the well, I don't know. We we discussed that at our last meeting. It's in the minutes a little bit. Yeah, it's it's, it's it was a lot brighter appearance until the county found out that they could use it for. Right. things that they didn't think and it was going to be a pass-through but i don't think that money will arrive here right. and the federal government mandated that the county our yeah. county system oversee the the uh divvying out of the money so right. that's so when it's the not, we're not getting any drop by okay. over a hundred percent yeah the yeah, last one county government is like well, right, but they'll, they'll, they'll suck up our hundred and some grand. Yeah, that's so, what everybody told the federal government, including yeah. our, our U.S. reps. But um, we, had a, we had an issue uh, 10 years ago. There was VCOM. It was all communications money and the, it was supposed to go directly to the towns. And we got a twenty five thousand dollar grant to do this tower up here. But then the federal government, their wisdom, decided to send it through the Vermont Department of Public Safety. And that's why their state police radio system is so robust because they sucked up 99% of the money and I ended up getting like four grand for three and a half years worth of work. So that's been my experience with that. If it goes through any other level, you ain't seen any. So that line eight is probably what we got to deal with. It's ours. Are we lucky to get that? We're lucky to get that. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty disappointed after all those years of work, I was, you know, went from 25000 to $4,000. That's all there is because the state spent it all. <laughs> So well, it's like with this over the FEMA grant over yeah. here. It was all about reconstruction of the stream. Right. And then no, we didn't even do that. We didn't even touch it. <laughs> you know, just when you mention that, you know, I would really like to entertain the thought of doing another FEMA grant. We wouldn't have to deal with unruly property owners. But actually solve the problem that we originally got the FEMA grant for. I mean, the stream bank is pretty ugly looking the way it is um, now. And it, in the constrictions that we were trying to solve are still there. That stonework is still there. Um, and I know it's a pain in the butt to deal with <coughs> that. Um, and I, 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 you know, if people don't want to do it, I'm, I'm not gonna, but I think that's, I know that um, when we, last time we met with um, VTrans over the, their culvert issue, they were going for a FEMA grant, and I'm, I was thinking that I might ask Shauna if that's still something that they're pursuing, and if they would be interested in maybe. Did she say that would be over probably a five-year period? Yeah, she said it would probably take five or six years for them to even know if they would, would be awarded the grant. Even the gravel rocks that are on that side is, is caving in, or have. Well, that's a, that's a whole new issue that's the state there. looked at it. I don't know what we're going to do about it. And I don't know whether that's the property owner of that house. I wouldn't hold my breath is all I'll tell you. Um, but yeah. yeah, that's that's going to erode. It's going to fall into the stream. Um, that shouldn't be the property owner. Really. No, but they're probably going to have to get after the state to get something done. Yeah, so is that the state? Is it a state yeah. issue or a yeah. town and issue? The, I believe it's in the right away too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And in those planning granite they, blocks that are in the stream are constricting the wa water flow for because all the trouble on the ground filled up in those culverts again right the one culvert that's you gotta dig the stream out on the downside to even get the gravel to come out of the culverts <laughs> if you clean them and the street girts uphill it's going to fill it back in again yeah. so anyway maybe that's I, I might maybe i'll <clears throat> check in with shauna about that whole thing just to see where they're at yeah if she comes up on the 12th we'll say well we're here let's take a little yeah. walk well, actually, that's a good idea. Don't warn her. She would be no. Her. She would be willing to do that. Yeah. The FEMA people at the Department of whatever it is, Homeland Security and Emergency Management, right. say 
when they took away that money that there was a possibility of right. asking again for another. But yeah. I don't know. They said they, they could be couldn't. working away. It might not look great. Yeah. Well, I'm interested I mean, the, the next flood will happen. Yeah. The bank construction is still there. Yeah, I'm interested to see what happens in the next flood. I think we're going to have almost a repeat. But. The, the store is not over the top of it anymore, but the constrictions are still there. Yeah. And that's my concern. And plus, it would be nice. It's the in the village center. It would be nice to actually have it look nice to go along with a beautiful park that's right there. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so, anything more about the American Rescue Plan? I'm good. Okay. We, all right. So, just a couple of updates. We I should probably make sure we have an agenda item at every meeting just to discuss it briefly, even if it's the the air. Are, yeah, uh, yeah. I think yeah. I'll just add okay. that to the agenda. Yeah. That way, we we have to, we can just update whether. Yeah. It's okay. Or not. Yeah. That's we'll, we'll do that. Um, so the personnel policy. Um, was sent to the LCT, and I, I sent it to uh, Jill Muir, who's kind of my contact person, and has been helping us with the personal policy. I didn't hear back from her for quite a step, so I sent an email last Friday, and I got an email response from her today that um, she, it was kind of on her list, and um, she apologized for not getting to it. But she, um, so she sent it back with some suggestions, um, very easy to incorporate. They're basically deleting some things, and I had some questions about some of the language in the VLCT model that we were using. So I can easily do that um, tomorrow, and then I. So once I do that tomorrow, I will send it to um, Abby Friedman. I think her name is, um, and she will review it um, and have the VLCT uh, lawyers review it, and then they will send us a proposal for lawyer fees to um, have it legally vetted, um, which is pretty minimal. They did this for us once before. It's part of a service that they provide. Um, so we definitely won't be paying um, uh, kind of a, a regular, like a town lawyer fee for it. Um, and we'll know what they're going to be asking for. Um, we actually have to approve their proposal and uh, the select board has to approve it. So I'm hoping that we'll have that by July 12th. Um, town hall renovation, um, I, it had been my intention to get a hold of uh, Mary Jo Llewellyn to see if she would be willing to head up a committee uh, to, to start discussing on how we can improve the town hall so that we can use it as a town uh, meeting place, not for town meeting, but, but for, for public meetings. board. A much better building for public yeah. meetings in our um, room. Yeah, so um, so I had, do have her contact information. That was my first stumbling block. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so that's, we'll try to get that going. Um, Before you get over the subject, I would sit here all this time. Okay. Just a minute. <laughs> uh, sorry. That's all right. I just said a few things. <laughs> Just to talk about the painting, because we did talk about right. that during the, during the budget period, and mm -hmm. we had an estimate for, for twenty five hundred dollars from a local painter, and he's uh, very very good and very um, diligent, and lives nearby. And to paint the town hall here, what? To paint this building? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it is a very special historical building, and it's starting to look kind of crappy. Right. So. Yeah. Because it's because the estimate is twenty five hundred dollars, and we've gone out for bids for painting before. And it's if it's under very useful, under um, under eight thousand, eight thousand, we don't million. have to put it out to bid. Um, we are asked to um, get at least three um, estimates um, in the purchasing policy. Um, I don't care if we do that or not. The, the uh, auditors might. They can um, just get mad. Yeah. Um, we, so you're looking we, to get $2,500. I know what you're paint, talking about, and I know that other buildings right here in the village have been painted by that person. Yeah. Um, and I would totally trust. So I will make a motion. Well, we can actually, we make a motion? it's not on the agenda. It is true. It's not on the agenda. Which oh, it's under town hall renovation. Yeah, it is under other business, which means it can be discussed, but. Technically, it should be warned. So can we warn it for the next one? Um, Would yeah. you paint before you did any renovations? Renovations may take a while to figure 
Yeah, the, the renovations, I'm thinking, um, renovations probably I, gonna be I would agree with yeah, Diana that, you know, this is kind of a long-term project. There are some things that we might be able to do fairly quickly. Yeah. Um, like insulate the attic. The insulation. Um, if you're going to use the next one, you're going to want to insulate the attic and the floor. I mean, I, I yeah, um, and I guess it would be up for the to committee to kind of come up with a prioritization, but I think there are some long-term and some short-term things that, that can be done, and I can't see us doing much to the outside of the building um, uh, in the very near future. Yeah. No. Probably by the time we get to that. We've used it quite a bit. I think if you put a couple feet of blown in up above, and my thought always has been spray foam the bottom of the floor and put, yeah, a, skirt, sure. put a skirt on it, this building would be pretty good. I'm pretty sure there's blown in insulation up there already. How much I'm pretty sure there. that ain't the fun did. Well, if it's there, then I think if you hired a spray foam guy to like spray a couple inches yeah. of foam under the floor and then skirted it. Right. We yeah. will the whole house with spray foam. I'll tell you mm -hmm. what it would seal it up and the air can't. What's happening now is that the air is just coming right up through the I, I did the same thing to my house. What we should do really is have um, applied with um, Efficiency Vermont to have an energy audit done of the building. And that would be done by one of their approved contractors. They would come through and do an audit. And there, may, there used to be um, financial incentives that would pay for some of the work that was and done. And may still be. And there may still be. I hope there's still We're going to use it this winter. We're going to definitely want to yeah. do some of those things. I would definitely think that you should have energy on there. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's kind of a, and we could arrange to have that done without having this committee. We could just. Energy on it is, is going to be based on how much energy is used. It's really. No, no, it's, it's not. Well, they'll it's also tell you what to do to improve. I feel like they're going to tell you what you should yeah. do, but you it, get a free energy on it normally. It's not based on the amount of energy you use. No. Um, they basically do a, a type of uh, fan, a fan. It's kind of like a, they use a full pressure. Yeah. They blow it up. A blower, 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 blower test. They, they, they check and see how much leakage there is. Yeah. And we've spent a lot of time in here in the winter. I can tell you this floor needs to be sealed up. Yeah. yeah. Well, take a look at our windows for leakage. Yeah. I mean, so there are obvious things that we know we need to yeah. do. Um, and so that's what the energy audit would do. There would be a leakage test, and then the contractor would come up with uh, cost. solutions. Yeah, for that, what what it might cost to replace the windows. Um, I wouldn't mind that. What, what it would cost to blow in more insulation above. What it would cost to insulate the underneath the floor. Um, yeah. And then you know we would have those costs, and and we would be able to select. Um, the contractor would probably be able to prioritize what would be most beneficial first or, you know, and we would select what would be done and, you know, and then of course with the windows, we would probably have to check with the historical, you, the historic. you know, what we are allowed to do because there are restrictions. Um, and I don't know what those are at the moment, but our committee could research that. Um, but we will want to be doing some of this before winter. If right. you want to work. We do have, we do have an alternative space for the winter. Um, Right at the moment, we have permission from the school to use the community room. So if we aren't able to do much um, with the town hall for winter, I mean, we can hang in here as long as we... Well, we've been here all winter. You can do it. You just got to yeah. wear your boots. Right. Um, no, we do you have... You just spray them, but I think you can put the panels around the outside of the out back and keep that wrap. Yeah, well, we, that yeah we, can, we can definitely look into that. I mean, obviously, none of this has been budgeted. For this on our fiscal year 22 budget that's coming up. Um, and the so, no, we don't have any right now. Okay. Anyway, so we'll, you know, we'll. So, so on the painting, you say we need to warn it at the next meeting. We should warn it just to okay. just to have our. So two our weeks. So let's cover. make sure yeah. let's put that on there. Yeah. I just can get the painting I will, started. I will write a note right now with other agenda items. Any other business to come before and the done board? It. All right. A motion to adjourn. Um, I'll second that. Any discussion on the adjournment? So all those in favor, say aye. 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 We're all hot. <laughs> and, not, and not in a good way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.